I should tell me when. Whatever you're in. Oh, you're on. Oh, I'm on? Okay. Uh, tell me what uh, is this going to be. Probably if you stand. Yep, that's good. Okay. okay. So if I was doing an assessment, like if he came in for a tethered oral tissue assessment, I usually will start with the lower lip. They're usually sitting up like in a dental chair. Mm -hmm. I don't have them laying down, but okay. So open just a little bit for me. So we're going to look at the buckles, which is back here. You can see the phenom, but it's not overly tight. When I run my finger over it, it feels um, like butter, not guitar string. Speed, speed bump, maybe. No, this guy is. Can you see that? Maybe come from the side a little bit, Bob. You see how um, prominent that is? And then when I run my finger over it, it's like a fin. Can you feel how tight that is? Yeah. So I would say lower buckles are fine. Lower lip is, is pretty significantly restricted. Um, and then the upper mouth or upper lip. So you can see the frenum there. We're gonna push. There's some tension, but it's pretty high. In an older person, an adult, you could look for a recession by the teeth where the gums are kind of moving away. But you also wanna be careful to note like it's it shouldn't restrict normal movement okay if you have like the cheek way stretched out then you know it's going to seem tighter but that's not normal movement so those are fine you can see them but they're not really restricting normal movement in my opinion they don't feel overly tight upper lip flipping it over the nostrils you can see the frenum looks like the attachment is about right here so we would say that's in the papilla when i push on that see how it blanches mm -hmm. do it again uh, and you see the papilla move between eight and nine, the front teeth. So I would do that too. It's not, his is not terrible. It's somewhat flexible. Really I would, yeah. I would, especially in a child, especially yeah. in a growing, developing child, because I think that the lips, we don't have as much like studies on them. We don't know all that they impact, but I have, I had a patient who I released his lips and he stopped wetting the bed, which is mm -hmm. like crazy to me. I was, I was shocked. Um, but you it, like the position of the sphenoid and all of these different things in there can be related to that tension. You know, if it's pulling in a way it shouldn't pull, it doesn't just impact that one spot because the rest of the face moves differently too. He only okay. wets the bed after drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you see when he smiles, how much his lip curls in. Okay. You see how it's like tucked under there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's partially his attachment. Again, his is not the greatest example because it's not super, super tight, but it's tight. Um, so that would probably help relax the lip a bit and take away a little bit of that gummy smile. Sorry, I, I hope you're not being offended oh, by please, me analyzing bring it this. On. Okay. Um, and then if you look just like at his bite, so he's actually almost class three. I mean, without, I yeah, you. without seeing his, um, you know, imaging, like ICAT imaging and things, it's hard to say, but I would bet he's a class three because mm -hmm. he's almost end to end. Yeah, he, and you can just see like how pronounced the chin is. The maxilla is underdeveloped to a degree. Um, hard to say how much, but when we do, well, I don't, Dr. Brenda does like Ceph scans. Um, so it measures everything we get all these angles and that's like beyond my scope of understanding. <laughs> all right. Open. So now we're gonna have you just open as big as it's comfortable and lift your tongue up right there. Okay, so you see kind of the floor of mouth coming with it. Relax your tongue. Now I'm gonna hold down the floor of the mouth and now lift your tongue. So really his movement is actually good. Um, and he was telling me, like you don't, open again, open bigger, and then lift your tongue. A little bit of restriction. I would say he's probably a functional two. Okay, so he would be one where I'd say let's let's start myofunctional therapy. Can you do? Um, can you suction your whole tongue up in the roof of your mouth? So bring your tongue forward just a tiny bit. Okay, good. And so you see the salivary ducts here. So now let's now there. Yeah, you're fighting. Mm -hmm. So. Sure. I prob probably would recommend doing a release, but it would depend on what your symptoms are. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't have symptoms, I would, I would let it go. But if you told me that you struggle with sleep or whatever it may be, I'd say you probably benefit. Um, but the front of the tongue actually has pretty good mobility, but it's that mid tongue. Right. So, um, and so when you hold the floor in the mouth and have them lip, lift the tip of the tongue, you're really assessing front of the tongue mobility. Sure. And if they can do the suction and you hold, you're really assessing 
mid posterior tongue mm, mobility. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, well, let's do another thing. Do your suction again. So really, like he's one that he he has enough space. You know, is it perfect? No, because he's got some. You know, he'd benefit from ortho from a cosmetic standpoint probably, but. He's got, you know, the, the borders of the tongue are a bit rolled. It's a little bit cramped, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say he needs some expansion. Whose tongue comes to the all the way to the yeah. outside of their teeth. Well, yeah, my kind of yeah, rule so of yours thumb. Yours is not that way. Yeah, my kind of rule of thumb is like, if it's covering half or more of the teeth, mm-hmm. then they're too narrow. So I would say, you know, mm-hmm. you could get away without having ortho. Um, what else do we want to look at? Septum. You can't really, I mean, his septum, I mean, his nostrils look good. Yeah. Another thing you can assess is if you have him take a deep inhale and you look for nasal valve collapse. So inhale again through your nose. So he's good. Sometimes you'll see the whole, like the nares is just going like this. And so then, of course, that patient has to breathe through their mouth when they're sleeping because their valves are collapsing. So you right. have to look at like the underlying reason for the, the mouth breathing. Right. So. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you.